But I want to tell a story about a woman that I wrote a chapter about that really demonstrated compassion in a profound and powerful way. Um, but she had to let go of some stuff. She had to let go of fear. And her name is Ann Evans. I remember being the outreach director at Bethel Church many years ago when Ann Evans um, was um, required to go on some outreaches, but she was afraid. And um, so she she stepped out. She started going out some outreaches and she saw the power of God move. And she said, this is what I was born for. But she she still felt um, afraid. And I want to just say to you right now, some of you may be facing fear right now. Do not sit in that chair of fear. Don't stay in that chair of fear. This is a new day and a new hour. And God has created you for such a time as this. What will compassion lead you to do? So Anne was sitting in that chair of fear for quite a while. And she was allowing fear to control her, manipulate her, and tell her who she wasn't. But Jesus had another story for her. And, um, and she stepped into compassion. She stepped into the heart of Jesus. I believe that you're going to step into the heart of Jesus. So I, I met with Anne and I said to Anne, I said, Anne, I want you to consider going into the nightclubs with us and ministering to young college students. She looked at me like some of you just looked at me as well and said, what? She said, God, I, I can't do that. I said, you can. She said, I, I, I can't do that. I said, Anne, you can. I said, the only thing that needs to change is a mindset. I said, and you hear God so well. If you're comfortable ministering to people and praying for people inside the church, you can do it in the nightclub. The only thing that needs to change is a mindset. You know, there is a lot of people that have religious mindsets, religious mindsets that keep them in fear, keep them in can'ts, keep them in I won't, uh, keep them I, I, I'm not. Um, but I believe that the compassion of Jesus Christ will empower us to say we can, we will, because he has overcome. So I said to Anne, I said, Anne, I want you to go away. I want you to pray about it. And she went away and she prayed about it. She came back to me and she said, Chris, I, I believe I'm supposed to go into the nightclubs with you guys, but I'm afraid. And I said, Anne, it's going to be OK. What we're going to do is. I'm going to invite you in and I'm going to tell people like I brought my mom to the nightclub and I'm going to tell people that that Anne prays for people and God speaks to Anne and and God does amazing things through Anne's life. And I'm going to challenge young people, the college students to just sit down in a chair and I'm going to challenge them to let her pray for them. Anne was like, are you kidding me? I said, absolutely. I'm not kidding you. This is, this is what's going to happen. So Anne goes into the nightclub with us. She sits down. I begin to invite people to sit down in the chair and, and uh, have Anne pray for them. Because Anne could hear the Lord inside the church and pray for her. Why couldn't she do that in a nightclub? She began to pray for people. People began to get impacted by the power and the love of Jesus Christ and stepped into compassion. I want to tell you this, compassion will have a step over fear. Compassion will empower us to do things, not in our strength, but the power of the Holy Spirit's strength. I want to tell you, you were a person that were designed to live in compassion. You were designed to move in compassion. After all, that's what Jesus did. So time go, went by and, 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 um, got so excited. She came alive in the nightclub. Anne was like 60, 61 years old at the time. And, and uh, she, got, she got ignited with a passion to be able to reach college students. What's God going to ignite you, ignite inside of your heart? What's he going to stir inside of you to reach people? So Anne, um, she came alive. And I said to Anne, I said, I said, Anne, I feel like you need to take this ministry. You need to develop it and take it. I love starting things. I don't always like managing stuff, but Anne said, I want to do this. And so she took the ministry and she took it to a whole nother level. She had people that would come with her to the nightclub. There's all these young people and it's just amazing things begin to take place. So one, one evening in the nightclub, if you're joining us right now, I'm asking the question, what will compassion lead you to do? And I'm telling a story about a woman named Ann Evans that stepped past fear into the nightclub 
and began to minister the heart of the Lord to young college students while she was 61 years old. So Anne had a, a bunch of these young people joining her. And, um, and one night they had this idea, why don't we create in the nightclub like a fire tunnel and we'll just dance you know uh, through the tunnel and we'll get warmed up now the music is just pounding it's just pounding 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 and so no one could really hear what was going on but so the team they just began to go through the fire tunnel and a fire tunnel is you know, go through and people lay hands on you and pray for you well other people in the nightclub thought it was soul train back in the day and they were like this is awesome so they start going through the fire tunnel as well. And the team begin to lay hands on them and pray for them and, and pray for the fire of the Holy Spirit to come upon them. One young woman, after she um, uh, went through the fire tunnel, which she thought was a soul train tunnel, she turned to one of the young leaders and she said, her name was Candace. She said to Candace, she said, what do you drink tonight? Candace said, I'm not drinking anything. Of course, we don't want our people drinking in the nightclub. She said, you're not drinking anything. She said, no, I'm not drinking anything. She said, what are you on? She said, I'm not on anything. And she says, I love Jesus. And the woman looked at her in the nightclub and says, you love Jesus. Why are you here? And she looked at her and she said, the reason why we're here is because of you. We've come for you. And she began to share the love of Jesus Christ with her. I tell you, Saw so many people get lit up in the nightclub, miracles, signs and wonders, people getting saved. You know, the bouncer said at the time that when our teams came in, the place was such a safer place. There was more peace in the atmosphere. Hey, let me know if you want to start a nightclub ministry. I'd love to be able to help you with that. We saw the power of God touch down in these nightclubs. We we went to around four different nightclubs. In fact, the nightclub ministry that we started in Redding, California at Bethel Church, it's still taking place. We have teams still going into nightclubs in Redding, California, and I would love to help you as well. If you're in an area right now where there's nightclubs and you're having a desire and a passion to be able to start a nightclub ministry, maybe with your church, maybe a ministry that you're connected to, we would love to have help you see that take place. There's a couple of guidelines that we encourage people to stay within when they're starting a nightclub ministry, but we would love to be able to help you with that. The reason why is because of this verse that I'm about ready to read to you. It's a verse that highlights the heart of Jesus Christ and how he is moved with compassion. My question for you as we read this verse before we even start is what will compassion lead you to do? I'd love to be able to hear from you. I'd love to find out what God's highlighting to you. But in Matthew chapter 9, one of my favorite verses, Matthew 9, Verse 35, it says this, when Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness, every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest.